going to work in my dilutions journal today. So I've got it gessoed and I'm um, going to use some of my uh, little bits of art here. And I printed this out. This is a printout. This is not the original. So what I did was when I went into my printer, I definitely printed it in quality. I went in and synced. I have an Epson and I have an iMac computer and mostly Epson's and Canon's because uh, I have a Canon printer too but I'm using the Epson today you can go in and you can tell it uh, you can resize it you can tell it uh, if you what color quality you want I always sync mine with my computer so I always go in and say uh, sync with iMac because otherwise it will sync with the Epson but um, I think it comes out better when you sync it with your computer color so it looks more like it did on the computer so that's that. And then I also printed this out because I want the crown. Now I could have brought this into my pages and if you have a word processor you can bring it into that or you can bring it, I could bring it into um, uh, iPhoto if you have any, anything where you can um, cut, you know, and, and uh, mask off. And I could have brought it in and just, you know, masked it off and just printed I want this crown but I'm going to be using a lot of these other th crowns in some of my other journal pages so I thought well I'll just print it out I'm not using the originals because I wanted to show you how beautifully they print this paper is double sided coated and it is uh, for inkjet and that's what I have if you have a laser you'd get laser and just make sure it's coated so this way the colors I mean look how beautiful the colors come out so you'll get beautiful colors. A lot of times if you use cardstock, if it's not coated, the colors on an inkjet will just absorb. I don't know how a laser works with cardstock because I never had a laser. So, uh, But you can see how beautiful that comes out. I mean, I can get the original and show you the... Well, the originals aren't really the originals. The originals were... I, when I made these, I used my papers. I just printed them out and then made the butterflies and all the good stuff. So I never I never used my originals anyway. So they were always printed copies. Uh, my originals go into a folder, all my papers, and eventually I will make a journal with all my original papers. So that's that. So we're gonna and I'm gonna use this. I wanted this because I'm gonna use this for the fairy's wings and I'm going to use this to put on the top and then I, I also am going to use the smaller ones on this side and then the crown is what I'm thinking I'm going to be using for this page today. And I'm going to draw a fairy. Even though I have tons, I'm going to draw one and um, just cut her out and put her because I want to put the wings on and then the fairy on top. So it's going to be very colorful this page and I'm going to use my dilutions to kind of do the background because I want it to be colorful and you know dilutions inks are so colorful so that's what I'm going to do when this dries I'm going to let this dry and then I'll be right back okay I've got my fairy drawn and I think the wings are going to be the perfect size of this butterfly so I'm going to cut this out and um, I'm going to color my girl, and since I did her on um, copy, well, heavy copy paper, but not really good enough for watercolor, so I'm going to do her in color pencil, and I'm going to keep the background colorful, but. Uh, not busy because we've got these very busy wings here and the border the little banners are busy enough and then her crown is going to be in the same so I'm going to keep the back pretty and colorful but just not busy I really want this to stand out on her. The 
this paper that I printed this on is very nice. It's just heavy enough, you know, but not too heavy. I get, you know, I'll get you the poundage on it because I know you can buy. Um, I mean, this is HP paper, and I know they let you feel it as long as it's coated is, you know, what I want. Make sure that you pay attention to. There's you know, so many downloads out there, and if you don't, not just mine, if you don't print them on the right paper, then you're not going to get all the pretty colors, and that's the whole idea. That's why I did these. So you guys would get, oh, I'm such a terrible cutter, aren't I? So you guys could get the pretty colors that went into all this And I made these funky because you can see some of the words in there came through. I, that one says sweet love. So there's some little words that were on the original sheet that I tried to get through when I was cutting these crazy little banners. Now my other banners are more like pennants, um, like little hanging, and I love them too. I don't know if, if you saw the video where I used one of them. I'll try to show you, you know, how to use my things because I, I get so much joy out of making this stuff. And, um,. Trying to make it a little easier for you guys when you're doing your artwork. You know, to have all these things available to you. So when you're doing your journals, you know, you have them. You can just cut them out. And I love this. I really love this. And um, then I've got the crown and then the other smaller banner, which I'm keeping small because the other side of the page. The one side I'm going to have the bigger banner, and the than the other side, and on purpose. I mean, I could have printed that exact same one, this one, two times, but I thought it would be cool and funky to have the two different ones. I mean, right? We're all about being kind of free and funky in our journal, so at least I know I like to do that. And making all these papers, when I originally made all these papers, um, the doodling and stuff, I you know, really wasn't thinking about this project, but I look at those papers and I'm like, you know what, they are so pretty. I make something out of them. You know, they're bright. You've got all kinds of teal and reds and oranges and these and a little bit of black and white running through it. Which you know I love. That is my favorite. I love color. I just can't handle things that don't have color. You know, I don't dress that colorful, but at least I, I used to, though. I did more when I was younger. But I just don't now, and I don't know why. But I don't as much. See, I added a lot of black and white to all of these because I'm crazy about 
Oh, that's going to look cool on her. Okay, very cool. Perfect size. And if you want her, um, I can put her on Etsy, too. Um, she's really a rough sketch, but if you want her, I can surely put her there. So I'm going to color her in, and I'm going to use... Let's see, this is so colorful, these pretty things, so let's see. I can't make her dull, right? Get out your colors and see what you like. Hmm. I think she's going to be... Let's see. I really have to sharpen some of these. So I will be right back. Okay. So let's get this. I'm going to move this. Okay. I think you got it. workshops there is a free preview for you to check out so you can see if it's something that you're interested in so go over and take a look and uh, I hope I see you there going to use um, some gesso on this because I want her dress to be, I think I'm going to do it in acrylic, so I cannot, I think I can put the acrylic straight on here, I don't think so. So, I'm going to gesso that. I don't want to use any water with my gesso because this paper is not water paper. It's not good for water. So I'm just using straight gesso. I am not diluting it at all. And it's nice because the dress will appear, I'll have some texture on it, you know, and appear like it's coming, it's over her. So, but you don't want to use water until you get that gesso down because you're going to have your paper buckling because this is not at all meant for 
watercolors. I mean, it's barely holding up to the gesso, so we'll see. Once the gesso dries, it should be good enough to put the acrylic over it, and I really want to use the acrylic on the dress. So I'm not going to use any papers or patterns on her dress. I'm going to make it just pretty color that goes kind of with the wings, you know, that'll complement the wings. Because I want the wings and the crown and the borders to really stand out in this page. So. You gotta kind of, when you're doing your journals, figure out. I mean, it's for fun, so you can practice. And you can have practice journals, and then you can have journals where you really want to get down to it and practiced enough, and now you want to really make some pretty pictures. Okay. So let's let that dry. You know, we'll let that dry and you can see that it's got some nice little bit of texture to it. So it should hold the acrylics fine. I'm going to aim this a little this way for the next shot. Okay. Mix water with the acrylic because just like the, um, the gesso, I think that I don't really want it to buckle up the paper, so I'm going to keep it pretty thick and give the give it texture. So I'm using teal, and you know I'm not quite crazy about using that brush. So get a different brush. Sometimes it takes me a while to figure out. And I really do like the rounded brushes better, but I have to get more. I really try to be as informative as I can in a tutorial, but if you require and if you want and you desire uh, to learn more, then please check out my workshops. They are step-by-step -step instruction by me. We go over everything. There is bonus footage for you and I take you through the whole process and they are downloadable so you can go at your own pace and you can have them forever. So check them out. And I'm going to get some of my gel medium and mix with this so it moves a little better and doesn't dry so fast. with these. I love the dilution things, but the sprayers sometimes get me crazy. want to complement that, you know, the pretty colors on my papers. So, um, I think that'll be a nice complement to these colors in here. And then I'll add some teal and some brighter pink in here. And just, and I'm just letting this, I'm not dabbing it. I usually dab it, but I'm not. So I'm just letting this hang out here and dry. I like it. I like the deep colors. So let's just see how that goes and um, see how that dries. Oh, it's really cool. 
Very cool. Okay, cool. I'll be right back. Let me tell you the colors that I used. Tangerine Dream. And I used Post Box Red. And then I used Pure Sunshine. So those are the three so far that I used. It's really pretty. Okay, what I did now is I took the, I'm sorry the camera was off, I took the Vibrant Turquoise and just sprayed it on and then kind of look how pretty that looks and just wiped it off because um, I just wanted to get some of these colors in there. Now I'm going to get my um, see, so just spray it on and just kind of wipe it off. So cool. And I'm going to get my bubblegum pink, which I don't know what I did with it. I thought I had it out. So I'm going to find that. And I move things around, and when I do, I always misplace stuff. Clean up one thing and make a mess out of another. Well, let me look for that because I don't know. That's my favorite color. I don't know what I did with it. I'll be right back. Okay, found it. My beautiful pink. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that kind of it's very cool. It's going to be a really cool background. And now I'm going to let this dry. Okay, I don't know if you can see, but I put some... Uh, let me just get this angled properly. I just put some swirly lines of different colors in there. Just to give some more colors that are in the paper. And uh, I'm just going to go over this some gesso and you know the gesso is going to kind of pick up the colors from the illusions. So. make like a haze over it. I'm not going to put too much over here because that's where she's going and I, I don't want to make the um, texture too much there. I want to be able to get her down without popping, popping up. Okay, but so I'm kind of putting a lot of texture and colors but not actually a lot of detail because the paper has so much busy stuff on it so I just wanted to make you know but I wanted to tone down that background a little bit now if you um, went in with you know the white which I have where is my white <clears throat> white where are you I just had my white oh anyway. Hey, I move things around so to give myself more room, but I don't know. Now I can't find anything, so so let's put light in here. So this is blue. 
blue a little bit. And some paint. See, that's going to look so pretty together. Okay. So that's what we've got a nice textured background. And, I mean, you could stamp now and do other things. But I'm not going to see how I need, I need to stamp some words. But that's, i got to buy myself some more words. Let's see, she's going to go here, and then what I've done is I've cut the wings, the, well, the butterfly, so this way the wings are separate, because they'll go better on her that way, and I've just got some white on her, okay. So let's let this dry, and then we'll get her down and get uh, a little bit more things going on in here. I want to go over stuff and add some black in here and um, then we'll be done. Okay, so I finished her up a little bit more, added some more to her. I still have to work on her, but I finished, figured I'd work on her once I get her in the book. So let me just angle this a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to get gel medium and get her in. And the reason I'm going to use gel medium is because I think it doesn't um, bubble up as much, and I don't want her to, so. And I think this is going to be really so cool. I'm very happy with that. And um, so I'll get that down, and then look at this. How cute that is going to be. Oh, my goodness. And then, and then I have to figure out what I want to do over here and probably put some words. I'm going to put the shorter one here and the longer one there. So that's how I'm going to do that there. So she's going to have the shorter one on this side, the longer one on this side. So I'll get that started. I'll get that down, and then we'll um, I'll finish her up, and we'll see what she's going to look like, what the page is going to look like. And I know lots of you like to write, and it's great. This is, gives you a whole spot here to write a sentiment or whatever you want to. You can journal on here. You can put journal bubbles. You can put lines and, you know, anything, stamp, um, put whatever you want on that side. And that's how I like, most of the time I like to do a double page, so you have one side to write in, which I don't do a lot of, but, um, and gives you the one side for the actual girl to be on, which works out good, or, because it's really hard to kind of center her and put her in the middle because of the, this here, so... That's what I tend to do, but I mean, you you do what you want. And I'm gonna try to get this on here because I don't I don't really want her wings to go off the page. So I am going to get her done. I'll get her down and I'll be right back. I got this really cool stamp from my neighbor, who's my friend, and she had a whole bunch of stamps and things that she didn't want anymore, so she gave them to me. Um, and this one I am going to use on here. It says love, and I think that it's going to look really pretty, and then um, I'll decorate around it. But I am going to stamp this on here and see how that goes. And probably going to want to do it about there. And I put a book underneath this because it's, hopefully it'll give me pressure pressure. If I lay, put enough pressure, hopefully it'll go on. Okay, let me stamp this up and get this down. You can see I added the love, and then I put a stamp with um, some uh, azaleas 
and just kind of fill that in. I like the way the black came out. I really would like something on this side too, so I have to see. This side I'm just going to leave it. I just stamped it in the Garden of Life. Friends are the flowers. So, and um, I have so many friends on YouTube. I thought this was a really good uh, little sentiment to put on there show you guys. I really appreciate you guys watching my videos and taking the time to comment. It means a lot to me and I hope you enjoyed this and I hope this helps you uh, figure out some fun things you can do in your journals and if uh, you with my little bits of art that I sell on Etsy um, there's always ways to have fun and incorporate them with sketches of your own girls or if you want to purchase mine it's easy uh, and you can have start off having lots of fun and it gives you uh, I think it gives you the inspiration to uh, practice more and learn more and I will be having my um, my journaling uh, with my girls in a couple of months I'll have that workshop available for you and you'll be learning how to draw these girls plus also getting sketches that I have on Etsy included so you can use them in your projects if you wanna do that you know that's perfectly fine especially for a beginner I mean that's what it's for it's for stress free, free fun and to get you started into loving your journaling and your artwork so until the next time thank you so much and I'm just going to do a little bit of touch up and I'll show the picture at the end and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. This was lots of fun. And if you'd like to purchase some of my little bits of art and stuff and sketches, please check out my Etsy uh, shop. I have the link below for you if you want to. And then the workshops are available. Um, also, I put the link below for that. And I hope to see you there. And I hope you uh, have some fun. And let me know if you have any questions. I'd be more than happy to answer them for you and uh, help you out in any way I can. Thank you. And if you have any suggestions for me, please leave me a comment. Let me know. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. You guys are great. Bye.